Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to a very special video. Now this channel is called Some Ordinary Gamers, and I operate and upload videos onto it. Now, there are many men and women subscribed to this channel who come under the guise of being gamers. And this channel is oriented towards video gamers. Now, uh, a lot of you people ask me what I have in my personal computer. There's a, there's a fraction of the community here, a uh, division of it, that is primarily PC oriented. Now, while I do do a lot of creepypastas and I do a lot of other stuff and I do uh, a lot of gaming primarily, all those EXE games, I also like to mess around with technology. I myself used to be an engineer before I went into the video editing route. Now, as an engineer, I played around with the latest uh, PC parts, and as a gamer, I played around with them too, to elevate my gaming both graphically and computationally. I like to see where gaming can take us and what parts we can use to push that envelope further and further and further. As the next generation came out, we saw games get bigger and much more expansive, and this video is geared towards showing you how much more expansive it can even get, and to sh also show you, again, what PC parts that I personally use in my computer for YouTube and gaming purposes, which is a big question that's asked to me. And just as a personal thing, you know, it's nice to see that people look at us as some ordinary gamers and know that we are a market of gamers, and we like video gamings, and we enjoy it, it's our hobby, and it's nice to see that companies that are supporting gaming look at us, and it's nice to see that they sent us, you know, stuff to look at and high performance stuff and see what the future exact future rather of pc gaming and video gaming in general can be because a lot of people in the some ordinary gamers camp are slowly kind of switching to the pc side and this couldn't be a better time than to showcase to you guys what i run in my systems and to also show you what the future again of gaming holds this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Intel Box Master System. All it needs is Intellia the Echidna, and we have our next generation system. Now, it's sent over by Intel. It literally looks like a 90s box for a video game console on the side over here. You're looking at some of these awesome games. If you're looking at the corner there, that's Office Hero. Sometimes the best way to escape boredom in the office is by a day at the office. But we're not here to look at a box with safety features included or the master system which puts the good in good game. Got all of these 90s mottos. We're actually here to look past that and show you all the insides of it, which is this nice little box. Uh, it's got this wood finish on the side, so it definitely took a note from our classic game consoles over here. There is actually a really fun fact, this is something only I and the people at the uh, studio would even do, is we actually smelled the box and it smelled like, you know, the classic uh, plasticness of the game consoles back in the day. Um, don't ask me how I know about that smell, we pop off these old tabs over here and inside we have what appears to be a game. So to get into it, this is actually really interesting and this is why they really focused on us. So you gotta power this thing on and you come across a uh, set of flashing lights over here and you gotta play back the Intel theme over here it seems. Now I keep trying to enter it in over here but it doesn't work and as you see this flashing like reds right which means I'm messing it up so I'm gonna keep trying to focus on through over here and again as I keep failing but as I move on I actually get it in over here and we unlock it inside and then we gotta pop this top off really carefully well, I don't know about really carefully. Once we get that hole popped off, and it's going to take me a little bit of time to figure that one out there, but once it is off, we do see what's inside, and on this nice sheet of paper, we see that behind this, ladies and gentlemen, is quite possibly the next generation in computation in PC gaming, is the Intel Core i7 processor, uh, the 6700K to be exact. Now, as a tech enthusiast, I feel pretty honored to be one of the uh, first people to actually uh, grab a hold of one of these first of all and these are the exact processors well not the exact model but these are the exact workstation CPUs I use when I mess around with any video games or EXE games out on my uh, you know here they even shipped us over an SSD uh, I've used SSDs I have SSDs in my computer this is my first time actually dealing with any Intel SSD though but aside from that we got the whole processor again I really want to focus on this kind of stuff too because uh, this is the same kind of stuff that I have on my computer from these uh, exact manufacturers and this is the future of PC video gaming. You know, over the course of uh, years or months over here on the, uh, you know, internet gaming front, we've come across a lot of people who throw out a lot of buzzwords with CPUs, GPUs, and all that stuff on the market. A lot of people scared of PC gaming, but I'm here to actually show you guys, you know, what, it, what it's all about. And again, what's in my system as well, too. So over here, this is a 6700K processor. It comes completely unlocked, meaning if you still need to overclock the 4 gigahertz on it, feel free. It comes with NVMe technology, which if you couple it with that SSD I showed you earlier in the video, you basically get faster read write speeds which again help now 
The reason I have some of these CPUs over here and the reason why I use uh, workstation server grade stuff is because when I'm playing video games or when I'm going into recording videos for YouTube, it's nice to have processing power that can actually match itself. And processing power actually helps a lot in video games too, especially when you're dealing with titles that are revolving in the open world spectrum. Games like Grand Theft Auto V, games like The Witcher 3, games like Watch Dogs or Assassin's Creed. These games rely on a beefy CPU and Again, if you're dealing with making YouTube videos, a lot of people ask me too, and again, I started out from a laptop which had nothing more than a dual core, but ever since I became a video editor, and that was my job in life, I started using more higher grade CPUs, and again, I use i7s primarily, which help a lot when it comes to processing video and editing software and, you know, dealing with recording gameplay. So when I'm recording my EXE games, I typically stream them 1080p locally, and I use, uh, again, uh, the higher end CPU to basically encode that in real time while I play these games. If I don't have that necessarily, it's just going to stutter the video and make it look like, you know, complete garbage to anybody watching. Now, SSDs actually do help out a lot, and most people don't know what an SSD is, and let me tell you what it is. Basically, it's something that doesn't, it's a hard drive that doesn't rely on mechanical parts or magnetics necessarily as it does on memory cells, meaning with this, you're basically dealing with flash storage, and that alone helps with read and write speeds, meaning that if you're playing games like Grand Theft Auto V, and I'm going to use that as a big example because it's a very beefy title, it really, really, really helps when you're loading in those high element textures that you may have heard of. You know, because when you're driving around Los Santos at really high speeds, and if you have a system that doesn't have a speed, uh, a read write speed on this hard drive high enough, then you're gonna run into issues where Los Santos won't even load, and my friend Kyle has that issue on his system. And in order to even uh, rectify that, you're going to need a hard drive that can stand itself. And especially when you're dealing with creating YouTube videos or, you know, rendering stuff out, you're going to need something that doesn't bottleneck your renders. Maybe your processing speed might be really amazing, but your hard drive, because it's, you know, because of the lack of read and write on it, it may not be storing it as fast as it's being rendered. So you're running into issues like that. Even having a hard drive that is good goes a long way and again this uh, intel ssd over here as i've been told comes with the nvme technology and the little tests i ran on it actually do make a real world difference on file transfers too i've i've tried rendering some videos on it i've tried you know recording some exe games on it the uh, aladdin exe some of the some of the gta stuff i've recorded for for the future is actually done on these cpus and uh this this exact cpu actually in this exact uh ssd and as of now i've gotten better performance than I usually would. The problem is with earlier, uh, you know, attempts at recording video game gameplay uh, using my old i7 processor and using a, a old SSD, which wasn't even from Intel, I ran into stutters when I was recording, and which was understandable as I wasn't exactly up to snuff with the parts of the time, and playing a high-end game like Grand Theft Auto V would cause stutters on any modern machine, but when I tried it with this uh, CPU and the SSD, my recording time did get faster and the stutter decreased, which means, yes, as the technology progressed, the games ran smoother, and they ran much, much more smoother indeed. There were, in fact, no bottlenecks with the graphic card that I had. Now alongside the fray, Corsair sent over their Vengeance DDR4 RAM, 16 gigs here in total, and a lot of you ask me what RAM really can be, how much do you need, and why do you have so much in your computer. I set it out in my Twitch live streams that I have about 64 gigs of RAM in my computer. Now when you're gaming, the amount that is offered over here that is actually sent is quite adequate actually. If 16 gigabytes is much more than you need, and DDR4? is an evolution to the current DDR3 memory that we all have in our computer. It's higher clocked, runs faster, has higher bandwidth throughputs, and it is, in general, good quality RAM. Now, a lot of you ask me how much, again, RAM, and I answer that right here, but there is a certain threshold of RAM, and you really don't need any more than 16 gigabytes. Now, if you're into content creation and you're making YouTube videos, and especially, especially when you're live streaming, if you want to go live streaming, and I get this asked a lot, how much RAM do you need? And I would say you need a little bit more than 16 gigs. Now, I typically cap it around 24 in the, you know, gaming computer for the EXE games and everything because when you're editing, that's when you really need RAM. And if you're using programs like Adobe Premiere or After Effects or even Photoshop or anything from the Adobe Suite in general or any editing software, you're going to run into issues where your effects won't be rendering as fast as you can, the previews won't be coming in, and if you don't have enough RAM, then you don't really have enough space to handle any of that, and your editing is gonna lack from it. And you're gonna run into slower, slower times for renders, processing is gonna be slower, and encode times may be lower too. So if you really wanna rectify that, and you wanna become a top-tier editor, you wanna 
elevate the game a little bit. And you're getting a little more RAM, but what's offered over here and the speed that's given, it's pretty decent and I definitely didn't have any problems with it. In fact, I used the exact RAM and I used this exact setup when I was making this video. Now over here we have a motherboard, the Z170 Deluxe from ASUS, and I've never been the one to go for the uh, high-end motherboard uh, market or anything. In fact, my tip on motherboards really and what I have in my computer is an ASUS Rogue, the Republic of Gamers one. And my honest tips on motherboards is to get one that has the most expansiveness. So over here you got a whole bunch of PCI slots and you whole got yeah, you basically have a whole environment for uh upgrade ability and you're getting a whole lot of expansions basically just to add more parts in as you see fit because one of the problems with motherboards is that when you actually get one yeah and you want to start replacing it you're gonna to have to gut the system out replace it and then replace all your parts onto it so you typically want to get one that's a good motherboard and you also want to get one that has a lot of expansiveness you got to remember those key elements there good and it should have a lot of stuff that you can add on to it so you don't have to gut it out one day because usually when I get a motherboard uh, I usually end up building an entirely new system and motherboards some people question how useful they are with gaming they're actually pretty helpful they allow you to basically close up some bandwidth throughputs and again one of the things with PC builds is you got to have parts in the same class when you're building a computer for making YouTube videos making gaming you got to make sure the parts you have are in the same class you can't just skimp up and get a really good CPU and a bad GPU and vice versa. So you want to get good parts and you want to have stuff that's in the same class. So nothing bottlenecks the other. Bottlenecking is a big issue. And that's why if you have bottlenecks, none of those parts really can be used to their full potential. Now in conclusion, these guys, these manufacturers rather, are the exact people that power the computer that is used to make the hundreds of videos here on Some Ordinary Gamers. And I do have to thank them for the uh, opportunity they've given us. I usually don't get to do a lot of these things and being a tech enthusiast myself, I jumped at the opportunity to check a box like this uh, and to see what was inside it because as much as I love gaming, I love technology and I like the latest and newest stuff out there and to see the newest of the i7 line of processors as a video editor too, as an engineer, it's a big deal. And I do have to give a big thank over to Intel. And again, like I've always said, these are the exact parts, these manufacturers that run the SOG PC. And these are, this is the same PC where I played Sonic.exe on, I played a bunch of other games on, Aladdin.exe, I browsed the deep web on, and Lord knows how much else. And final, final little note here, I do have to say thank you to Intel over here for even organizing this thing together. So big thanks to you lads over at Intel. Uh, please take the Intelia the Echidna idea. Please, 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 that would be amazing. And definitely if you're watching the video, please check out their website. They've been gracious enough to give us the opportunity to unbox some of their newest stuff and to show you the future of PC gaming and gaming in general. So I'll leave the link in the description. I'll even pop it up on the video over here. And that being said, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. I know this is a deviation from what I do, but it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And being a tech enthusiast, I wanted to share sort of my engineering background with you, and I wanted to show you the future provided by the lovely lads over at Intel, Corsair, and Asus. This is me, Mudahar, and I'm out.